Unfortunately, for some reason, here in the United States, Gerard Perigo, just not that popular. It could be because of marketing, it could be because they don't have many points of sale here in the United States. However, they make incredible watches and they've been making watches for a very long time. Today, I have a Laureato to show you guys their integrated bracelet sports watch. A lot of people refer to this as an alternative to those popular brands that make integrated bracelet sport watches. You know the ones I'm talking about. However, I think the Gerard Perigo have their own pedigree. Their fit, finish, and quality is obviously on par with many of the high-end brands that we hold in really great esteem. So let's flip the camera and take a look at the Gerard Perigo Laureato with a beautiful blue textured dial. Well, here it is. This is the Gerard Perigo Laureato. This is in a blue dial. It has a texture, I believe it's called the Clou de Paris. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Please forgive me if I pronounce it incorrectly. However, this is a watch that came out. The original came out in 1975, beating a lot of integrated bracelet watches to the market, including the Overseas and of course the Nautilus from Patek Philippe. I actually have a vintage version right here of this watch. It was originally called the Quartz Chronometer before it was called the Laureato. Very, very similar in design. They really did take a lot of inspiration from their vintage watch. Uh, you could see the bezel is almost identical in every way. The dial set up very, very similar. Even the cases, very, very similar. The only thing that is different is of course, this is a quartz watch, the vintage version, because that was essentially the pinnacle of technology back then in 1975, but the bracelets, the bracelets are very different. And I have to say, I like both bracelets, but the vintage version, this is a really cool bracelet. I like what they did here and it's really nicely finished. So even back then, they did a great job at finishing their watches. They were really very high-end watches. And today, obviously, a beautiful watch is what we have here today. This is a beautiful blue dial. The indices, very similar to what you would have gotten from that vintage model. However, they are now filled with loom. The hands had loom on the vintage model. It was a sports watch, but this one actually gets pretty good loom on the hands and indices. You have a date window at the three o'clock, very similar to what you would have gotten on that vintage version. However, now it has a black background rather than a white. This gets a very similar bezel. The bezel is sort of a polished and brushed mixture. So you have a base plate that is polished. Then there is a eight sided bezel that is sort of sitting on top of that. I think it's all one piece. The sides of that are polished. And then of course there's a chamfered edge that goes all the way around. And then on top you have brushing. So the uh, bezel execution here, really, really nice. I'll do close-ups of it so you can see what I'm saying. There's chamfered edges on everything, on the bracelet, on the case, on the top, on the bottom. So really no sharp edges anywhere on this watch. Obviously very beautifully finished. The dial has a beautiful texture. They call it the Clou de Paris. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, again, I apologize if I did not. However, it's sort of a tapisserie dial, I guess. Again, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but uh, you have the GP logo. It's just GP applied at the 12 o'clock and then everything else is loomed. All the other indices are loomed. It also says Gerard Perigo, 1791. Down here it says Laureato Automatic. This gets 100 meters of water resistance, so you do get a big sign crown and a screwed in case back where you can see the movement. Now the movement in here is the GP01800. It gets 54 hours of power reserve. However, it is beautifully finished. You have circular graining, you have Cotes de Geneve, you have obviously beveled edges. It is beautiful. There's circular graining as well. The rotor here is engraved with Gerard Perigo. It is very beautifully engraved as well. Uh, I have to say, this is a gorgeous movement. Obviously, you have a sapphire crystal on the back as well. A really nicely tapering bracelet polishing down the middle. I would call this an H-link bracelet. And then you have 
screwed links, which is awesome. Uh, a lot of brands do overlook that, especially major brands, expensive major brands still overlook that. And here's the profile. It looks beautiful. You can see the brushing on the side. There is a chamfered edge that goes along the bottom and along the top. Uh, and then there is a chamfered edge that goes along the top of the bracelet and the bottom of the bracelet. I mean, they really did everything they could to make this watch feel very, very premium. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to do some measurements and then I'm gonna throw it on my wrist. So the measurements on here, this is a 42 millimeter watch. Uh, and it's basically spot on at 42 millimeters. You have a lug to lug here that is kind of large because you do get male end links, unfortunately. So you do have a 49 millimeter lug to lug at the case, but at the bracelet, it's around 52.6, 52.4, somewhere around there, depending on where you actually grab it. The crown is very large. It is signed with GP, 6.9 millimeters. And the thickness on here, including the sapphire crystals on top and bottom, 10.6 millimeters. Really, uh, actually very, very thin. Today I have on my Vacheron Overseas. This is a 43 millimeter watch, so a little bit bigger than the Gerard Perigo. But uh, like I was saying, this is a watch that came out after the Gerard Perigo, not designed by Gerald Genta. So, you know, something to keep in mind. Uh, kind of interesting also. And there's the Gerard Perigo Laureato on my seven and a half inch wrist. And you can see it looks visually smaller than my Vacheron because not only the case wears smaller than the Vastron, but it is smaller. It's 42 millimeters and it's thinner. It's around 10 millimeters thick. You can see uh, it wears really nicely. It's just a beautiful watch. Overall, I am very impressed. I think this is a good looking watch and it costs around $14,300. Now it seems like a lot of money, but when you consider the prices of the time only blue dial variants, from the brands that I have mentioned in this video, brands like AP, Vacheron, The Holy Trinity, Patek Philippe, you're talking about around $30,000. So Vacheron I think is the most affordable, I wanna say, but the blue dial variant uh, of the Overseas Series 3 that I just showed you, uh, however, time only, not the world timer, I think that sells for around $19,000. However, you can't buy them and they are selling for around $30,000 now. They were selling for a lot more than that recently as well, but this I believe you could still get at that $14,000 price point, which is excellent. And I have to tell you, it's getting all of the quality that the other brands are offering at obviously less money. But there you go, Loom, excellent on here. The only thing I would say is, of course, I would love to see a Loomed second hand. However, this is an integrated bracelet sports watch, not a dive watch. So knowing that your watch is working in the dark is not that important, but still, I would like to see it. I think all in all, this is a beautiful watch. And of course, the Loom is excellent for a major brand. Again, I am impressed with the Loom, much better than what I get on my Vacheron. Uh, and better than what I get on my AP Royal Oak. So impressive. Well, there you have it. I really do love this watch. It's always been on my short list of watches that I want to own one day, especially with this blue dial. There are tons of variants out there. They've been making this watch for a very, very long time. That's kind of the reason why I bought that original vintage version. I think it's so cool and completely underrated. I know that term is very overused, but this is definitely an underrated watch. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It's super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Anyway guys, thank you for logging on. I will catch you in the next video.